I promise not every video I make right now is going to be about coronavirus, but it is a big important thing happening in the world right now. I want to talk a little bit about how it is currently impacting games and how it might further shape them in the near future. Now, some of these impacts are, of course, pretty obvious and now basically common knowledge at this point. For instance, the fact that you can't have a lot of people in one place together has caused a lot of major events to get postponed, possibly even straight up canceled in the long run. No E3, no GDC. If you have any local retro cons that you love, those aren't going on right now either. And while that certainly sucks, one of the bigger things, of course, is how it's having a direct impact on gaming itself, both in a negative and positive way. Now, some of the negative ways that we're currently aware of is that we have had a couple games that have been slightly delayed right now, not just ones happening in the long run where they're talking about, you know, oh, we're gonna have to set back release dates for certain titles, but really just trying to get games on the days that they are currently meant to release. Animal Crossing and Doom both had a couple problems on their launch days. Square Enix is already talking about issues that might be happening with Final Fantasy VII Remake when it comes out, because it's not just an issue of whether or not these games are getting made, but making sure they have some way of getting to people. A lot of major retailers are, of course, closed down. And when it comes to online stuff like Amazon, well, a lot of those places are prioritizing sending more important essential supplies, which they should, like medicine, food, toilet paper. But as a result, you're not necessarily going to guarantee to get a game on the day it releases. Now, as a kind of side effect of that, a lot of people are now focusing more towards digital games, even more so than usual, because, well, that's a guaranteed way to get the game right away at launch. I myself know a lot of people who had Animal Crossing pre-ordered, they were ready, they always prefer getting physical, but because of how the circumstances shaped the situation, they just gave in and swapped over to digital. This also means a lot more people are actually playing games right now. Across the board, whether it's individual titles or just seeing activity on different platforms like Steam, there are way more users simultaneously playing games than ever before. So much so that it's actually even impacting the quality of some of these services. In fact, PlayStation has already announced that they are slowing down download times in the US in order to help to accommodate all the increased internet traffic that is currently going on in the world. This increased demand, by the way, is also having the side effect of making it a lot harder to get a hold of certain devices. Switches in general are getting very difficult to come by, not just because of production being slowed down due to coronavirus, but also because people started buying out what was left really quickly once they realized they needed something to do at home, which is kind of cool that we have a lot more Switch users out there now, but it is definitely making it difficult for anyone that's trying to get a hold of one right now with resellers putting it at some crazy high prices. Going back real quick too to that earlier concept of delayed games because of production delays, we don't have a ton of companies that have hard confirmed on this just yet. There's only a few that are really saying, hey, for sure this game is gonna be later than we originally planned. For instance, Outer Worlds, the Switch port is getting pushed back. But in general, there's kind of just this tone right now of companies just not really being sure what's going to happen to some of their timetables. A really good example of this is when Nintendo Shadow dropped their Nintendo Direct Mini last week. It started off with a little warning that said, hey, coronavirus is kind of impacting and messing with stuff right now. And as a result, not everything we say in this Direct is going to be accurate. They're hoping to still release a lot of these games at the time they were originally talking about, but in many cases, they might get pushed back a few months or even later. And this all really ties into the main thing I want to talk about in this video. And I think one of the big hanging questions a lot of people have is what does this all mean for the PS5? and Xbox Series X. Obviously, these systems are not slated to come out for quite some time. They're both aiming for holiday season somewhere in there, though neither of them have been particularly specific. Xbox put in that general holiday date. There was a very short period of time where it said Thanksgiving specifically, and they changed that, probably due to, again, the impacts of coronavirus. And PlayStation has been completely silent. We've only had the one presentation so far that was not exactly super exciting, and I think they are planning on making more announcements in the near future, but as it stands, we don't really know what the actual hard plan for PS5 is, though more than likely the original intent was to have something out for this holiday season because that's really the prime time for these new systems to come out. By the way, the next video I'm working on right now is an end of the month Q&A, which at this point is probably going to be a start of the next month Q&A. The point is, if you have any questions gaming related that you want to ask, make sure you're following me on Twitter if you're not already. That's where I'm filtering through all the main questions, so if you're not following me yet, Make sure to check it out. A recent interview that I think really highlights, I think a bigger question about this whole thing was something that Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, not just Xbox specifically, but Microsoft in general, had to say in regards to how coronavirus is impacting the industry. And the big thing that he really said is that the issue going forward isn't necessarily production. I think a lot of people, when they talk about how coronavirus is going to impact certain industries, is worrying about the long-term production, whether or not things are going to release when people want them to. What actually might be a bigger issue is the demand. 
See, as it stands, one of the main areas for production in China is already starting to recover from coronavirus. And there's always the chance that things might start going south again, hopefully not, but that could impact production. But as it stands right now, it looks like Series X's and even PS5's should be ready and released when these companies were originally planned. The problem though, is whether or not the customers are gonna be there when they come out. Now, when I say demand, I don't mean in the sense of whether or not people want these systems. Obviously, there's a lot of hype that's been building up over the last couple of years for next-gen consoles. People have been enjoying the PS4 and Xbox One, but it's about time for a change and hopefully seeing a much bigger boost in terms of what games are capable of doing. The problem though, is that because of what's happening with the coronavirus right now, people might not necessarily be in the position where they're willing to spend that kind of money on a gaming console. You know, this is one of the hot topics that's been debated a lot about each system is how much they're going to cost. We've had numbers thrown around in all kinds of different ranges with things like Series X is going to be $500, $600, PS5 is going to be $500, maybe $400. And of course, that hanging question of whether or not Microsoft will be releasing a cheaper version of the Xbox, which a lot of people are currently calling the Xbox Series S. Price has always been a very very important figure when it comes to which system people buy, especially when it comes to choosing between two systems that are coming out around the same time. In fact, I would even argue that some of the problems that the PS3 had against the Xbox 360 had to do with its initially much higher price. And a lot of the problems that the Xbox One had against the PS4 at launch was its much higher price with that forced connect bundle that PS4 wasn't charging you for. But with all the uncertainty going on right now with the economy and what's happening with people's individual jobs and life circumstances, the concept of how much these systems cost might be way more important than it's ever been. If we have a situation where Microsoft does release a cheaper system at 300 bucks compared to PS5 being four or five and the Xbox Series X being five or six, well, obviously a lot more people are gonna be tempted to save money and get the cheaper one if they're even thinking of buying one in the first place. But even that's kind of a weird situation right now because one of the things that Microsoft has really focused on for their next gen system is the concept of forwards and backwards compatibility where at least for the first couple of years of the Series X coming out, all games are still going to support the original Xbox One going all the way back there. So if every game coming out over the next couple of years is still gonna work on a system people currently own, it really drives down the interest, I think, for buying a next-gen system. Sure, there was heavier interest before when people had more money and were willing to spend for something that offered the best graphics and fastest loading times and all these cool things, but at the end of the day, the system you already own is gonna play all these new games coming out and you have to make a choice of where you're spending your money? That's a much tougher sell to make to people to say, hey, you should buy this really expensive new thing. What this has me wondering is whether or not we actually will see some kind of delay in the release of the Xbox Series X and PS5. Not because the systems aren't technically ready yet, but because we as consumers might not be ready yet. There may be a move for Microsoft to instead want to focus and shift development towards getting the Series S or whatever cheaper version system they have in line to come out faster and more readily available. Maybe there'll be a drive for wanting to release slim version systems or a more cheaply produced version of systems if the market isn't ready to support buying these more expensive consoles. Of course, a lot of this hinges on a lot of different maybes. We are still in the middle of coronavirus going on. We don't have a clear idea just yet of how the near or far future is going to be as a result of it. And so there's a lot of stuff that can impact whether or not these systems come out when they're planned to and what kind of state we'll be in when they are released. It's entirely possible that they will come out on the day we all thought they originally would and they'll sell fine. It's also possible that they'll get pushed back or they come out on that launch day and sales are just a lot less than they would have been otherwise. We just don't know for sure yet. I think this is just a very important question to consider and I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how both companies respond as time goes on. That's at least my thoughts. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys are thinking. Do you think these systems are gonna get pushed back? Do you think they're gonna release at the same time? Do you think that they'll get released on time but maybe with not as many games planned originally for launch because individual titles get pushed back? Let me know down below.